Remember to subscribe down below and like the video and share it on your Facebook and other social media. And then make a comment, whether a question or a comment. We read all of them and we try to respond to all. Okay, so today I'm going to give proof of God for the atheist, for the agnostic. I'm going to give solid proof of God in a very simple argument. Not only that, I'm going to then read from the rooted word translation in Romans 1 about the concealing of the knowledge of God. And I do all of this from the standpoint of one who has been a scientist. My first studies were astrophysics. I know very well how atheists and agnostics who depend and lean on scientism think and feel. Not only that, I did a degree in bio biology as well. And the biologists are the most, the most violent against Christ and Christians. More so than the physicists. There are many more physicists who become Christians and believers in the Lord than biologists. Nevertheless, since my passion was primarily astrophysics and the sciences, I'll be speaking from the hard sciences rather than from the biological sciences, mostly. So let's go ahead and get into a comment that I made on one person's channel just today. He is an atheist. He doesn't make any apologies for it. But uh, he has said openly that he suffered some uh, depression in the last year, had to be medicated, go to therapy, and these kinds of things because of not having meaning in life. He said on the one hand that mean, not having meaning in life actually frees him. But on the other hand, that's what led him to the depression. And he, he fights against Islam. He was a Muslim and he left it and he fights against Islam. Every video he puts out is about that. Um, so he did, he did say that he doesn't, he's not angry or hate people who believe in God. Uh, he says he actually finds that there are <clears throat> many good things in religions. And he, so he studies them very intensely. But the only one that he hates and cannot tolerate is Islam because he was abused by it so badly. That's what he said, not me. So I wrote this comment to him. Uh, because he talked about, uh, he referred to the natural, right? And, uh, when I hear a term that's used in such a limited way without, with all these assumptions about it, and, um, and it limits their ability to perceive the unseen and the spiritual, then I want to go ahead and dig into that and reveal that they're, they're faulty in the reasoning. And not to attack them, but to try to just open their minds that this is, much bigger than what you imagine. Here's what I say. Thank you for being candid with us. I want to say that the assumption of what is natural is extremely limiting in the atheistic framework. They take the scientific view of the natural, it's in quotes, as being whatever can be observed only with the five senses. Who said reality is limited to this? It is so egoistic to assume that nothing exists apart from what our own tiny organism is equipped to detect. Who are we? What are we? We're just an organism, tiny one, in the whole scheme of the universe. And yet, we're going to egoistically say that nothing exists if we can't detect it with these only five of our senses? We are one of millions of different organisms. And who said that nothing exists apart from what organisms in general can detect with their senses? Because someone might argue, well, you know, a lot of organisms have the sense of sight or the sense of touch. Even plants do. You have that, that sensitive plant where you touch it and the leaves close up, right? So you've got all of these different senses that are also located in other organisms. And uh, so you could argue that, well, see, it's not just with mankind. It's also with organisms. Okay, so let's go ahead and follow that, right? And who said that nothing exists apart from what organisms in general can detect with their senses? 
Who has the authority to declare this is true? Certainly not any human or humans as a whole. Since we are within both groups, humans and organisms, and this would stink of corruption to judge in favor of ourselves as the standard measurers of what exists and is real. That would be corruption for us to sit in judgment on that and decide that we're the standard measurers of reality. No, it doesn't work that way. The total mass of all organisms is a minuscule speck close to nothing compared to the entire mass of the universe. The size of the organisms, all laid end to end, are nothing compared to the unfathomable distances in the universe. Nevertheless, there are things we detect that we do not detect at all by our senses. And I didn't say that and we accept those as true, as existing. Thoughts. We cannot detect that with our senses, and yet they are real. We really do have thoughts, otherwise I couldn't be speaking to you. You say, but Ron, you're using your, your tongue to speak it, and so you hear it and you feel it with your tongue. Yes, but that's after the fact. That's not the thought. That's the results of the thought that proved to me that the thought really does exist. And that's the evidence that the thought actually exists. And yet we don't say, well, thoughts can't exist. You know, whatever's happening with your mouth and your ears are something else. No, we understand thoughts exist. Feelings. And that's even deeper. Feelings. Things that we feel that we oftentimes cannot even put into words. Sometimes I'm jealous of someone, and I know I'm not supposed to be jealous, but I can't stop that. Yeah? You ever feel that way? That's a feeling. That's real. How can you say it's not real? It's driving you. Of course it's real, and yet we don't detect that with our senses. The feeling. We detect the results of the feeling, but not the feeling itself. Number three, moods. Oh man, you get a mood. People say, oh, well, that's hormones. Uh, no. Hormones can be involved, but moods can arise apart from hormones. You can put yourself in a mood by worrying about something. Hormones didn't create that. It did not create that. Your heart and your mind created that. That mood. You put yourself in that mood. And we can go on with other things that we cannot detect with our senses, yet they are real and they do exist. None of these are detected with our senses, even if we are influenced by them or imitate the results of our senses. For example, our thoughts imitate the results of our senses. For example, we see something and someone moves, right? And the results from our senses detecting that, we then take later and we can think of someone moving in that way, in that location, even though we don't actually see them now. We do not detect our thoughts or any of the others through our senses, yet thoughts, feelings, and moods all really do exist. And you can testify to this now for sure, right? All right, the next thing I wrote. Some people may never feel happy in their lives, yet some do. That means happiness exists or it doesn't exist. Which one? If some people feel happy and some people never do, does it mean it exists or it doesn't exist? And you can't say, well, it exists for some and not for others. No. We're talking about existence in the universe. Does it exist or doesn't exi it exist? It means, of course, it exists. If it, if it exists with one person, it exists in the universe. If I have a Mercedes and you've never seen a Mercedes, does a Mercedes exist or not? 
The answer is obvious in this case. Yet, when it comes to God, people get crazy to try to prove he is not real. I have encountered him. Some have not. Does he exist or not? Of course, even if one person has encountered God and no one else has, then God does exist. What if no one has ever encountered God? If he exists but remains hidden from men, then he exists. It is not dependent on whether the one judging God has ever detected God's existence or not. You can sit and try to judge whether God exists or not, but that doesn't that doesn't give you the right to say he doesn't exist because you've never encountered him. There's a lot of things. There are a lot of things you've never encountered that exist, and you cannot say they do not exist. Interstellar medium. That's the, the clouds of dust particles between the stars. You've never seen them. You say, what about nebula? Well, that's kind of close, but it's not exactly the same thing. The interstellar medium is so thin that you really couldn't even see it if you were there. That was my specialty, by the way. You don't see the core of the star, which is inside the star, which is inside our sun, which is a star. And yet it exists. You've never had an encounter with it. Ever. I doubt you've ever seen Pluto. Yet Pluto exists. We have photographs of it and from telescopes, small as it may be. So I hope you understand that. If he exists but remains hidden from men, then he exists. It is not dependent on whether the one judging God has ever detected God's existence or not. And as hard as we try, we cannot make God not exist when he does. Now that doesn't mean that we do not have the right to be upset that we have never encountered God. That's what we have to deal with. Certainly, that is a valid feeling. But notice it's a feeling. It's not something you can detect with your senses. It's a feeling. You might de detect the results of it as you express it, whether consciously or unconsciously. So, but we cannot take it out on God. We cannot take those feelings out on God and continue a lifelong campaign against his existence and ruin the opportunities for others to encounter him. That's the most important thing. You can go on the rest of your life and pretend like God doesn't exist, but when you ruin the opportunities for others to encounter him, that's when you are turning to wickedness and you are evil. And that's what Romans 1 was talking about. And the people who do that are the ones that, that Paul is describing there. And so we have the golden rule again that Jesus preached. That this atheist said he believes that that is what keeps humanity alive. Is by loving ourselves and loving others in the same way. And even to the generations in the future, loving them in the same way. So we got the golden rule again. Don't ruin it for others to encounter God just because you haven't encountered God and you're jealous or angry or bitter or whatever. So I'm going to leave this video at that. This will be part one. Part two, we will look at Romans 1 and we'll talk about it in light of this discussion in this video. May the Lord bless you as you seek him with all your heart. Remember to subscribe down below and like the video and share it on your Facebook and other social media. And then make a comment, whether a question or a comment. We read all of them and we try to respond to all. Get on over to our website, The Rooted Word, and start reading the translation and also the articles we've posted. It's at therootedword.com. Therootedword.com. And may the Lord bless you as you seek him with all your heart.